On Monday the 30th of October, at St. George's Hospital in London, England, an atrial defibrillator was implanted in a human being for the first time. Historic incision coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First case of the day in his lab. Obviously this is the first time that an atrial defibrillator has been implanted and it's an important milestone for this therapy. The medical team was led by Professor John Cam, MD. Consultant cardiologist Dr. David Ward performed the procedure assisted by Dr. Francis Murgatroyd. The patient was a 34-year-old man from Surrey, England. The key moments in the procedure are to implant the leads done in the usual uh, technique for pacemakers. There are three leads. To test that the pacing lead is working, to test that the impedance of the shocking leads is satisfactory, then to test the ability of the system to recognize the atrial arrhythmia, and finally to test the ability of the system to cardiovert the arrhythmia back to sinus rhythm. When all those things have been done, uh, the actual device can be implanted and then a few tests run using the implanted device with the, with the wound closed. Okay then, let's have the coronary sinus lead in. Ken? Atrial fibrillation is a rhythm disorder which is characterized by very rapid and chaotic electrical activity in the atrium or the top part of the heart. This is associated with a rapid and irregular pulse. Patients who have this arrhythmia often complain of palpitations, strong beats, weak beats, rapid beats, and they often have breathlessness or dizziness or sometimes chest pain with it. It's a common arrhythmia. It occurs, for example, in about half a percent of the total population. And by the time patients are 60 years of age, it occurs in between 5 and 10 percent of those. In fact, it's the most common arrhythmia, that's rhythm disturbance, to cause admission to hospital. Atrial fibrillation is important because it is associated with stroke or cerebrovascular accident. In fact, uh, the American Heart Association estimates that over 75,000 strokes are caused by atrial fibrillation every year. Hence the need for an atrial defibrillator. Yeah. There you are. But how does it work? The metric atrial defibrillator is a device which is implanted in the body. It recognizes atrial fibrillation, and when it recognizes it, it charges and then discharges to convert atrial fibrillation to sinus rhythm. Devices like this have been used to treat various rhythm disorders. Most people have heard of pacemakers, for example, that prevent the slow heart rhythm. And there is a ventricular defibrillator, which is used for patients with cardiac arrest. This is the first time, however, that an atrial defibrillator has been used. All right. So it's on the left. The device is designed to be placed and programmed by physicians with techniques similar to those used for implanting pacemakers. Professor Cam. The implantable atrial defibrillator is put in the body rather like a pacemaker. It's just placed beneath the skin and it's connected to the heart via three wires that go through the veins to the heart. It recognizes atrial fibrillation automatically and charges its capacitors. It then discharges with a synchronized shock. By synchronized, I mean it's given at the same time as the ventricles are depolarized. The shock then converts the patient back to the normal or sinus rhythm. And if the rhythm is a bit slow following the shock, then there is backup ventricular pacing. There's also a facility for the device to store electrograms and various other pieces of data about the arrhythmia and about the success or otherwise of the device. Although the technology is brand new, those involved today are very optimistic about its future role. First, the consultant cardiologist who performed the procedure, Dr. David Ward. This operation adds a new dimension, I think, to 
the range of treatments available for atrial fibrillation, which is a commonly debilitating arrhythmia. As yet, we don't know anything about the long-term success of the device, but it's designed to improve the quality of life for those patients who suffer from atrial fibrillation, and we really look forward to the results of this therapy. Can I, can I come off here now? The technology for this procedure was developed by In Control Inc., located in Redmond, Washington State, with European facilities in Brussels, Belgium.